Greetings to you in Jesus' name. We are in lesson 11 here in our study in the book of Philippians. Our topic today is here to help. Our scripture of study, Philippians chapter 1, verses 25 and 26 for our study and for our edification on today. I'm hoping that all has been well with you and yours since our last study. Let us open up with a word of prayer. Father, we come in the name of your son, Jesus, asking your blessing upon this time of sharing. Thank you again for bringing us together for another study. Open up our understanding that we may receive from you today. And may your word so grow us and strengthen us that we will be and become better servants and soldiers for you and for your glory on this side. It is in Jesus' name we do pray collectively. Amen and amen. We begin our study today with the reading of our scripture text of study, Philippians chapter 1, verses 25 and 26. We will begin at verse 25 and being confident of this. I know that I shall remain and continue with you all for your progress and joy of faith. Verse 26, that your rejoicing for me may be more abundant in Jesus Christ by my coming to you again. That's a new King James version of the B-I-B-L-E, God's word to you and God's word to me. Some of you may have at one time or another entertained this question, why am I here? Well, I want to respond to that question by sharing this. You are here to help. Yes, you. You are here to help. You are on planet Earth to help and to serve others. This fact is so prevalent in our verses of study today. First, we are here to help each other to advance. Paul declared to the church at Philippi in the first portion of verse 25 that his presence among them was for their progress. The word progress highlights advancement. He was not there. He wanted them to know, to hinder them. He was not there to hold them back. His purpose was to push them forward and to further their advancement in the faith concerning Jesus Christ. Listen, my brothers and sisters, we are not here to hold each other back. We're here to help one another to move forward in the faith. Secondly, we are here to help each other to become people with a conviction. The word faith in verse 25 highlights being convinced. It suggests being fully persuaded about a thing. Paul clearly communicates to the church at Philippi why he was present among them. I'm here, he is declaring to them to make sure that you become believers who are totally convinced that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of the living God. I'm here so that you will be fully persuaded that you know that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of the living God. Now, this conviction comes with the promise. The promise is that you will experience the joy of faith. When the believer's faith conviction is beyond doubt, Joy will perpetually manifest itself. I will say that again. When a believer's faith conviction is beyond doubt, then joy will perpetually manifest itself. When your faith conviction is beyond a shadow of a doubt in your mind, you will experience the joy of the Lord. Now, there are three things I would like to mention about the joy of faith. First bullet, the joy of faith is joy that is glad regardless of the circumstance. The joy of faith, second bullet, is joy that is satisfied regardless of the situation. The joy of faith is joy that is content because it knows who Jesus is. And when you know who Jesus is, gladness 
will feel your person no matter where you are in life, no matter what station you are, where you are in life. Joy will feel your person and it would do it all of the time. Yes, joy all the time. Why? Because now you can say that I just don't have faith. I am convinced, fully persuaded. <laughs> Amen. I know who Jesus is. I know what he can do. I know that he's a way maker. I know that he's a heavy load sharer. Do you know that? If you know that, you will experience the joy of the Lord. I'm reminded of the summers who declared that the joy of the Lord is my strength. May the joy of the Lord continue to be our strength, your strength. Well, amen. Thirdly and finally, we're here to help each other to do even more for the Christ we serve. The Apostle Paul in verse 26 shares that your rejoicing for me may be more abundant in Jesus Christ by my coming to you again. The words more abundant in verse 26 highlights the, the, the exceeding of a fixed number. The words more abundant highlights the exceeding of a fixed measurement to go beyond the measurements, to go beyond the fixed number, to go beyond, to exceed the fixed measurement. The word rejoicing highlights glorying and boasting that is undergirded by the reason why one rejoices. It is undergirded by the reason why a person boasts and glories. Paul's visit, visit to the church at Philippi would not be his first. I'm coming to you again, he states. Now, when I come again, I'm coming that your rejoicing may be more abundant in Jesus Christ. Paul here is literally stating in common day vernacular that when I come this time, we will raise the roof of our praise to Christ even higher. We would not rest. <laughs> Amen. We would not rest upon what we did the last time. God has something new for us today. Amen. God has something new for us in the right now. And so I'm going to praise and or raise my praise to him even higher in the now. When I come to you this time, Paul declares, I rejoicing in the Lord Jesus Christ will be more abundant. When I come this time, Paul declares, I'm boasting in the Lord Jesus Christ will exceed the levels, levels of the first time that we came together. Well, amen. When I come this time, Paul declares, our glory in the Lord Jesus Christ will be beyond measure. <laughs> I would like to end this study with this question. Why should there be a consistent increase in all that we do for our master and our savior? The answer to that question is this, because he is Jesus Christ, the son of the living God, because of who he is and because of what he does for us on a consistent basis every day. He's taking us higher and higher. So every time we meet, our adoration, praise and what we give to him should be on another level. Therefore, my brothers and my sisters, may each time we come together be more awesome than the last. You know, there's nothing mediocre about our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. So then may there never be anything mediocre about our rejoicing in him when we gather. 
There's nothing mediocre about Jesus. So may there never be anything average about our boast in him when we gather and when we speak concerning him and when we speak about him. Remember, we're here to make a difference. We are here to enhance the lives of one another as believers and even enhance the lives of non-believers. We are here on planet Earth <laughs> to help. I want to thank you for joining with me in this lesson today, a beautiful lesson reminding us of the goodness of our God, reminding us of who Jesus is and because of who he is. May we never approach our Lord and the arena of praise and worship with a mediocre disposition. He is worthy of our increase. The raising of the levels of what we do for him every time we meet. Let us bow for a closing word of prayer. Father, we come thanking you for another day. Thank you for this lesson. Lord, every round, as you take us higher and higher, may all that we do for you may it increase. Thank you for this word. It is in Jesus' name we do pray. Amen and amen. Remember, my brother and my sister, we, we love God because he first loved us. And my prayer for you is that you would continue to be blessed and that you would stay blessed. May God continue to bless your going out and your coming in from this time forth and even forevermore. Until next time.